This is the first in an occasional series where I give my own personal opinion on some topical issue in the motorcycling world. In this episode, I'm going to talk about the imminent arrival of the BSA Gold Star because I'm worried it might turn out to be a bit of a sales flop. When we were first shown it a couple of years ago, we all thought it looked kind of nice and we were intrigued to see the rebirth of a classic motorcycling brand. I, for one, thought, hmm, I think I'm going to buy one of these. Then came the pandemic, Brexit and Ukraine, so understandably, there have been numerous hold-ups and changes of plans. But now the bike is about to go on sale, at least in the UK. But the thing is, I don't think it's going to be a big seller. And here's why. On seeing the specs and close-up photos, there were a couple of minor disappointments, like the radiator and the cheap-looking rear shocks. But we all liked the paint schemes and the overall stance of the bike, and there was that lovely tank badge that reminds me of the steering wheel my parents had in their Morris Minor, the very first car I can remember being in as a child back in the late 60s, and which I've been kind of obsessing over ever since. Doubts first began to creep in a few weeks ago when I asked my subscribers if they'd be interested in my buying a Gold Star for the channel. You know, the usual YouTuber routine, get a new bike, post initial impressions, then mod it a bit before doing a long-term review and selling it on. And I have to say that I was very surprised by the general lack of enthusiasm. The consensus seemed to be that I would quickly tire of the bike and that I'd be better off just borrowing one from a dealer for a few hours and giving my informed, if necessarily, brief opinion. Hmm, okay, so maybe I won't buy one. Then a couple of weeks ago, the prices were announced, at least in the UK, where it's going to be launched first, more of that in a moment. Um, depending on the paint scheme you opt for, we're looking at between £6,500 and £7,000. To put this into some kind of context, that's roughly £500 more than its perhaps most obvious competitor, the Royal Enfield Interceptor, and only, in quotation marks, £1,500 less than the significantly more powerful and more premium Triumph Speed Twin 900. Now the thing is, I've always had a soft spot for unashamedly simple bikes, but they have to be cheap. I loved the Honda Vision 110 scooter we ran for four years before swapping it for the ADV 350, for example. It was ultra basic, some might say downright crap, but it was dirt cheap both to buy and run. And look at the new Royal Enfield Hunter. It's very low spec, but it's also very low price, probably. They haven't been officially announced yet, but based on the components used and the price of the similar Meteor 350, I reckon it should come in at around £3,600. Okay, so you're only getting a 350cc engine with what I will recognise as a spectacularly feeble 20 horsepower compared to the Gold Star's 45. But for some people, those looking for a motorbike that looks and goes like a motorbike, that isn't necessarily very important. And we're talking not far off twice the price for the Gold Star. BSA are pricing their single-cylinder 650 closer to the Triumph Speed Twins 900 than they are the Little Hunter. Well, yes, you may say it's more retro, it's more premium than the Hunter, and that's true, sort of. The problem is that the reputable journalists who've ridden the Gold Star so far have all said the same thing. Yes, the engine has got slightly more pep than the Interceptor, but the brakes are wooden, the dash lights are difficult to see, the rear shocks are, as we unfortunately see on practically all new heritage bikes these days, inadequate when the pace picks up. Then there's a the question of the dealer network. There are just 10 in the UK at the time of launch, time of writing, compared to about 180 Royal Enfield dealers. I can hear you saying, well, yes, but give BSA a chance. They're only just starting out. But I'm trying to find reasons to want a Gold Star, remember. They say that they have plans for a dealer network in continental Europe next year, but for the moment it's UK only. They're also playing very heavily on the British heritage with a third of this original promo video I've been using in the background, vaunting the merits of the original bike from the last century. But at least for the moment, the bike is being made in India with a promise that production will soon be moved back to the UK. Now, I've no reason to doubt this. After all, Triumph are moving their manufacturing back from Thailand to the UK. And in any case, I personally don't have a problem with foreign manufacturing. 
Mrs. Rocket Man was built in Brazil and she's lovely, but given how heavily BSA are leaning on the Britishness of the brand, I think many prospective UK customers are going to want to believe that their bike is assembled in the Midlands rather than in India. In a nutshell, I think that at £6,500 to £7,000, the Gold Star is just too expensive to be basic transportation like the Royal Enfield Hunter, and yet it's not premium enough to worry Triumph, especially considering Triumph is about to launch its own range of basic three to 500cc bikes with Bajaj. The long time to market has wasted the initial excitement created amongst uh, enthusiasts, and BSA's reliance on its British heritage is somewhat frustrated by the fact that the first batch of bikes, at least, are being made in India. I think BSA have missed a trick. The Gold Star needs one outstanding component, a unique selling point. They should have spent another £100, £100 on really good brakes or some quality rear shocks, an extra comfortable seat or really nice feeling switch gear, or even just a pair of painted plastic domes to finish off the clocks like Kawasaki have done on the Z900RS. Something the reviewers could get their teeth into that they could wax lyrical about. Something prospective buyers could drool over. Or the bike needs to be cheaper. As it stands, it all looks just a bit too ordinary for £7,000. I was expecting it to come in at around £500 less than the well-proven Interceptor. But instead, it's £500 more, and this doesn't quite make sense to me. All this being said, I genuinely hope BSA proves me wrong with the sales figures. I can remember the excitement I felt a couple of years ago when the whole idea of a BSA comeback was first uh, mentioned. But, a bit like with Norton, without the criminality, the general mess in the world has meant that the Gold Star has taken an awfully long time to arrive, and basic human psychology means that the initial enthusiasm and excitement has had far too much time to wane. If the bike is a runaway success in the vein of the Royal Enfield Interceptor or Continental GT, then fantastic, I shall happily eat my words, hold up my hand and admit I got it completely wrong, and I might even buy one. However, honesty like that cuts both ways, and if my doubts prove to be well-founded, then I will annoyingly point everyone in the direction of this video. Having initially seriously considered buying a Gold Star, I think that, at least for the moment, I'll just order one of their beautiful tank badges. So BSA, if you are watching this, then I hereby throw down the gauntlet. A challenge, if you will. Let me have a Gold Star for a couple of weeks to review it, and I will publish my honest opinion. If it is as good to ride as it is nice to look at, then I will say so. Prove me wrong. Show me how good your bike is. Anyway, I'll let you know if I do get any reaction. And in the meantime, as always, thank you for watching.